Greetings coders. In this video we are going to look at classes in C++. So a class definition begins with the keyword class like we have here in this class called circle and it, the body of the class is contained within a set of braces and then it's going to end with a semicolon on the end right here. So this class is currently the exact same thing as a struct in C. So it's got just two variable names or fields that it's taking input on. Whereas in this class, unlike C structs, in this class it can contain, unlike C structs, a class can contain methods as well. So we still have the two fields, but now similar to Java, we can also have a method. Now this is typically defined in one file, in the header file is the class is defined like this where it's just got the function signature for the method and then in the .cpp file with the body of the function or method we have, we use the resource identifier with the method and the method body. This is in the .cpp file. C++ supports uh, visibility modifiers just like Java. It has the public where the member inside the object or class uh, is accessible anywhere, so from any other class. Private means that member method or field is only accessible in the class that defines it. And then if it's protected, then the member can be accessed inside the class and in its children. So it's a slightly more permissive form of private that works for any classes that inherit from a base class. We have public, private, and protected. They are defined using sections within the class. So unlike Java where you put a the visibility modifier before the function or before the class, we, it's done in groups with C++ and then everything's private by default. So here's an example where we've moved double radius into a private as a private field and then we've made public string name so if we instantiated circle somewhere and gave it a name we could access this directly and then also public is the get diameter function that returns a double. Classes in C++ have constructors and destructors. A constructor is used when the class is instantiated. It has to be public so that it can be accessed. A destructure is used to clean up any memory of the object. So if the, the object creates anything that's located on the heap, for example, then the destructor would be in charge of cleaning that up. It has to be public as well, but the destructor is prefaced with a tilde. So it's going to look something like this. The constructor is going to look it's going to look something like this. The constructor is going to have be public in the public group. It's got the same name as the class, any parameters that are going to be passed in for it, and then the actions that it's going to take. The destructor has the tilde before it, same deal, and than any steps that need to be taken to take care of memory management. So we instantiate the object either by creating a variable of the object that would put it on the stack or on the heap using the new keyword. So for stack based objects, so these are objects that will end at the end of a function and don't persist beyond that. It's just done you give it the, the type and then the variable name with the parentheses and this creates a circle object on the stack. This is automatically destructed when it goes out of scope it will call that destructor that we talked about in the prior slide. To create a heap based object we use the new keyword and it must be defined using a pointer so we'll have circle star c2 just like in Java, it works basically the same way, except we do have to define it here like this, and then use the new keyword like in Java. And similar to Java, this is creating a reference. It's because it's located on the heap, 
This is actually what happens in Java as well. When you use the new keyword, it creates it on the heap. And then, however, unlike Java, there's no automated garbage collection in, in C++. So we will need to use the delete keyword to delete the object and that deallocates it and calls the, the deconstructor. This must be done or that memory will continue to be held unlike with when we created on the stack. So where's malloc? We didn't have to malloc anything. We got to use this new keyword and we didn't need any of the other complexities that come with malloc. It just created it for us on the heap. In C++, it's a much cleaner, easier way to create items that are on the heap. You just need a pointer and then you use the new keyword and it's created on the heap. And then when you're done with it, you delete it. However, in certain situations, it can't automatically clean up after itself. And so just like with malloc, we also, we still need to delete. So in this case, if we did delete head and set head equal to null, head would go away, but all of these would still be sitting out there in the middle of nowhere and would be unused. So it's all uncollectible. However, if we have this type of linked list and then we do, we set it up, we can go through it until we reach the end or the null pointer and set next equal to current and delete current each time. So we're progressing to next and, and setting a temporary hold for the next, pointing at current next, deleting current, and then setting current equal to the next and moving on. So this will go through and delete each one as we go so that they all get cleaned up. So if we have an array of objects, we can use a loop through them but we can also use delete with square brackets telling it that it wants you want to delete all of the array of objects. So in this case, if we use this, it'll free all of the objects pointed to by each element. So if we have an array of objects that are created on the heap, this delete with braces will loop through each one and free them individually. And that's it for this video.